What's happening people, it's Mark, I'm here in Erbil in Iraqi Kurdistan in my hotel. Let's talk about what Iraqi Kurdistan is as opposed to federal Iraq, which is the southern part of the country. Iraqi Kurdistan is basically northern Iraq, it's run by the Kurds who are a cultural and ethnic group which is different from the Arabs that live in federal Iraq. They do have their own language. They have their own flag, their own government, they've got their own army, they control their own borders and they do have their own culture. There are other ethnic and cultural groups that live here like the Turkmens, the Assyrians, Yazidi people, there's also Syrian refugees that live here and there are Iraqi Arabs that live here as well. Plus there's other international people that live here in Erbil. So, Let's talk about do's and don'ts of visiting Iraqi Kurdistan. I can't really talk about federal Iraq because I haven't been there. I've met people from there, but I've never been there. So I'm just going to talk about Iraqi Kurdistan primarily. So yeah, basically I flew into Suleimania, which is a different city. It's southeast of here, near the border with Iran. You can get your visa on arrival at Suleimania Airport or here in Erbil. I had to pay 100,000 Iraqi dinar to stay and that would allow me to stay here on a tourist visa for a month. That's I bought that straight away in the airport, arrived in the airport. The guy said, have you got Iraqi dinar? I said, no. He goes, go to that queue. I changed some US dollars into Iraqi dinar, paid for the visa. I basically just changed the $100 so I could get the visa on my taxi ride into the city because I arrived at like five o'clock in the morning, went straight to my hotel, pouring down with rain when I got here. Another tip, don't come here in the winter unless you want to go skiing or something. I wouldn't advise coming in early February like I did. This is not Saudi Arabia where it's still warm in the winter or still hot in the winter like 30 degrees this is this has been like british weather here it's been raining most days it's been cold we've had a bit of snow <laughs> it's quite sunny today but that's you know not the norm i've been here this is my 10th day in country now okay so don't assume that your debit cards or credit cards are going to work in the atms here um, a lot of them don't work with Visa or MasterCard. The only one that me and my friend Jan that I was with in Suleimani found that allowed him to withdraw money with his MasterCard was Trade Bank of Iraq. So if you can find that one, you, can with you should be able to withdraw money with that one. Basically what you need to do is bring currency. Bring enough currency that you need for your trip. US dollars ideally, or you can bring British pounds, euros. They do not want Canadian dollars here. Me and Jan went to the uh, money exchange building in Suleimania. No one would take his Canadian dollars. They don't want them. But luckily he managed to get some money out of the ATM. That's another thing about the money exchange building in Suleimania. Don't film in there. My friend was filming on his phone. A soldier was straight over, told him to delete the footage. Also, don't try and take selfies with the soldiers in or outside the money exchange building, they're not up for that. Another thing, don't be afraid of the soldiers with guns that you see in the city or if you see at the checkpoints when you're going in between different cities. They're here for our protection. They're not trying to intimidate anyone. You do see armed guards like in the entrances to gated communities here in Erbil or armed soldiers outside of some hotels as well. I was walking past a hotel in Ankawa district, which is the Christian district here. There's a soldier with a gun outside the hotel. He's just staring at me as I walk past. He's thinking, oh, what's this white man doing here? I just smiled and waved. He waved back at me. He's just, they're just wondering what people are doing here. So yeah, expect to get questioned at checkpoints when you travel from one town to another. And always have your passport with you if you're going out of town because the soldiers will want to see documents. Just, they just want to know who you are and what you're doing, basically. When I explained to the soldier that I was just here for tourism, he seemed happy. Like People are happy that people are coming here for holidays now. The thing was, when I told my friends and colleagues I was coming to Iraq for a holiday, they thought I was crazy. Because when people think of Iraq, they just think of terrorism, war, that kind of thing. 
but the reality is there's never been a terrorist attack here since 2014. ISIS were defeated in 2017, they had a stronghold near here in, in Mosul, which is part of federal Iraq, but I'm not allowed to go there on the visa that I have. I would need a, a federal Iraq visa to go there, which I'm not intending to get. So yeah, the people are happy to have us here. Don't be afraid to accept the hospitality. Numerous times I've been given free stuff in cafes. Locals have offered to give me money. They've given me the phone number. They said to me, look, if you need anything, just ring me. A guy I met in Suleimania before I got the bus here gave me some money for my trip, bought me drinks and snacks for the journey, gave me his number, said, ring me if you need anything. That's what people are like here. A couple of guys from Baghdad I met on the mountain in Suleimania, same thing. Guy said, if you need money, let me know. They bought me dinner, bought me shisha. Super cool guys. That's the other thing as well. So UK government advises against all but essential travel to here in Iraqi Kurdistan and totally advises against travel to federal Iraq because they view it as a dangerous and unstable country. But everyone I've met from federal Iraq here, I've met people from Hila, I've met people from Baghdad, they all say that I should go there. You should go to Baghdad, you'll love it. So should I listen to the UK government or not? Or do you want me to see do another trip to Baghdad at some point? Hang out with my friends that I've met while I've been here? Let me know. Main thing I would say to you, don't be afraid. Throw away all your preconceptions and just come here and just be prepared to receive the love. That's it. That's all you got to do. I think this is a undiscovered gem. This country, this region. You know, I've just been in the cities, but, you know, because the weather's not been great, I've not really ventured much out of the cities, but there are lots of places of natural beauty here. Waterfalls, valleys, mountains. I did go up a mountain in Suleimania. That was pretty cool. I did want to go to Rwanda's Valley, which is like the Grand Canyon here but the weather's just not really being up for it so you know i don't want to do day trips out of the city when it's pouring with rain so yeah come maybe come here between march and maybe early june that kind of thing when it's warmer but not too hot i have been told it does get hot here in the summer a guy in Suleimania that i met said that he could get up to 50 degrees centigrade in summer that's too hot for me man but maybe coming in early february was a bit too early basically everyone I met here has been super cool I've met Kurds here I've met Syrians I've met Arabs from Iraq they've all been kind and hospitable to me I met one guy in Suleimania a strange old man that got angry with me for filming the call to prayer filming the mosque from the outside he started shouting at me grabbing me, trying to take my camera off me, but that was a one-off. Nobody else seemed bothered about me filming the mosque. What I mean by filming the mosque is filming it from the outside. I've never been inside any mosque here. I'm not sure if I, that would be allowed. The only other thing I've been careful about with filming in public is I've tried not to film women. I've tried not to film children. I'm not sure if women would like it if I film them. Women, especially the older women are, you know, care about the modesty i don't think they want to be on my youtube videos i haven't really spoken to that many women here i've only a couple of times spoken to women i'm not sure if it's acceptable to go up to girls in the street and talk to them like i would do in europe maybe that would be seen as a form of harassment i'm not sure but all the guys i've met have been super friendly even the ones that don't speak english will try and help you as best they can that's another thing don't expect everyone to be able to speak english the main languages spoken here in Erbil is obviously Kurdish, but there are people that speak Arabic as well. So maybe trying to learn some phrases in them languages could be helpful. A lot of the taxi drivers here in Erbil speak Arabic. I think they're federal Iraqis. So sometimes they don't, under, they don't, a lot of them don't even know where this hotel is. I showed them the card, but I think it's written in Kurdish. So some of them don't read Kurdish. So I, what I do, I, I call the hotel, get the, guy in reception to talk to them, explain to them where it is and then they can take me here. Another thing you can do is show a photograph on your phone 
of where you're going and hopefully they'll know how to get there. Oh yeah, make sure you get your vaccines, get typhoid and hepatitis A vaccines before you come here because if you are exposed to the water that's been used in the food and drinks and things like that, it could make you ill. I haven't been drinking the tap water here. I tell a lie, I've drank it a couple of times. I haven't been ill, but I've mainly been drinking bottled water. You can buy alcohol here. There are liquor stores here, but there's more in certain areas than others. Like if you go to the Christian district here, there's loads of liquor stores. Other areas you've got to have a little bit of a walk around to try and find them. There's not a lot of bars or restaurants that serve alcohol here. There is a few rooftop bars here in the city where you can drink, but drinking in public is not really a thing here. You go to a restaurant and you know you get pulp or you get water, that's it, you, you can't buy a beer with a meal. I haven't been anywhere where I've seen that. So anyway, yeah, let's talk about safety aspects. This is actually considered to be one of the safest cities in the world to visit. I would say the most dangerous aspects of it are the traffic. People do drive fast here, they drive aggressive, and they don't always give way to pedestrians. So be careful when you're crossing the street. They don't even normally give way when you're at a crossing. A lot of them don't even stop here when you're actually at a designated crossing. They just keep driving. <laughs> Look at these horses here. The only other thing is that I flew in, but you can come here via land from neighboring countries it's probably not a good idea trying to travel here from turkey because there is a little bit of beef with turkey over long-standing territorial disputes turkey do fire missiles over sometimes to the border area there are disputes with iran as well iran actually did send missiles over here in 2021 in 2022 so occasionally that does happen like missile strikes from iran there is beef with them as well i don't really quite understand it maybe territorial things as well maybe avoiding the border area with syria as well might be an idea there could be landmines in these areas as well but if you're in the cities you know i haven't felt unsafe at all apart from crossing the street and apart from being in taxis and buses with guys driving like lunatics like I say, the only negative experience I had was that crazy old man who threatened me for filming the mosque. Is it? Let me know in the comments, guys, from here. Is it disrespectful to film the mosque or the call to prayer here? Because nobody else seemed to care apart from this crazy old guy. So I'm going to have one more day here in Erbil and another day in Suleymaniye before I fly back to Istanbul for five days. So there's more videos coming. So see you for those. Peace.